everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Gabriella. I make videos about astrology, fragrance, self care, uh, mental health. I do vlogs and whatever else I feel like talking about. So if that sounds like your jam, please stick around. This is Mochi. So today, as you can see by the title, I'm sure you clicked ready to either attack me or to get me to spill the tea. Uh, I did this about Scorpios a couple months ago. I think it was like 10 ways dating a Scorpio will ruin your life or something like that. And it's one of my most popular videos. Today, I'm gonna do another video, which is gonna be why dating a Gemini will ruin your life. Now, I'm not gonna make this a series. Number one, because I've spoken about how I uh, don't really want to do series anymore on my channel and number two because I haven't dated every sign in depth and haven't given them a chance to ruin my life so <laughs> but uh, my longest relationship of my life was with a Gemini and uh, it was a wonderful awesome relationship where I learned a lot about myself I learned a lot about the person so uh, I feel like with my with my experience I can pass that on to you and you can discern if you should be dating a Gemini or not I guess you're gonna be here with me, huh? I guess you're gonna be here with me during the video. So, number one, if you don't end up with this Gemini forever, you will be very spoiled by their really clear, consistent communication. Gemini's ruler is Mercury, which is the planet of communication, and Geminis are known to have wonderful communication skills. And also, in love, they are people that want to be in constant contact with the person that uh, they fancy. And it's kind of funny because I know at least the Gemini I dated was not great at all at getting back to their friends. I mean, this person might take days to respond to a text just because their head was all over the place, I think. Um, but with me, when we were in our relationship, I was, you know, I would get phone calls if I hadn't heard from them because they were working. I would get a long phone call. Hey, I'm checking up on you. I want to let you know I haven't texted you because of this, this, and this. We would FaceTime. We were on, uh, you know, we would be DMing on Instagram while also on Snapchat back when I used that and texting. They are very, very much communicators. So you will get used to partners who communicate with you, which is, I think, what we all should expect, right? But it's not very common as many of us know or at least clear communication uh someone clearly saying what they want what they're looking for someone showing you through their actions how they feel about you and i think with a gemini i mean if, if the communication is consistent with them you kind of know where you stand and if you don't you can ask so after dating a Gemini, you will be pretty spoiled when it comes to communication. Not to say that that's not how communication should always be in a relationship, but again, it's, uh, it's, it's not very common these days, especially in the times of ghosting and leaving people on red and whatever. So well, they might make you feel a little bit needy in your next relationship uh, because you expect that level of communication and some people just can't or don't know how to do that. Oh, this is a big one. This is a really big one when you date a Gemini. No one will ever be as funny. No one will ever be as funny. In a relationship with a Gemini, typically, okay, say we're, we're not looking at the whole chart, but typically when you're in a relationship with a Gemini and it's, it's a fairly compatible relationship, you are going to be laughing more than anything else laughing more than being physical, laughing more than fighting, which is good, laughing more than sleeping. The whole relationship is just gonna be laughter and fun and spontaneity and you will get really, really, really high standards as to what you look for in a partner. You know, I'm, I'm so sensitive now to what really is funny because I kind of used to think that I was like the funniest person in my world. Like I was like, no, I'm, I'm pretty much like the jokester. I'm the, I'm the clever one. I make everybody laugh. I'm the funniest one. I even make myself laugh. But when you date a Gemini, they'll give you a run for your money if you're funny. If you're clever and quick, boom. They know how to give it right back to you. They are so quick. They are so witty. Their humor is smart. Uh, sometimes they have a really weird dark sense of humor or just kind of like strange. And that's not easy to find all the time. And so, and truly to me, nothing is sexier than laughing with someone genuinely belly laughing with them. So yeah, your standards will be pretty high. And again, it's going to be kind of a disappointment if you get back into the dating world with other signs or with other people. And you know, the best they can get out of you is 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know that laugh. You know, when someone has said something and they've tried to make like a funny joke and it's just not really hitting your funny bone and it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? And you're just like, dang, I wanna feel like I just got punched in the stomach, that's how hard I'm laughing. So yeah, it, it might make you a little sad if you get back into the dating world after dating a Gemini and you can't laugh as much and you're not laughing as much. They really do set a high standard for any kind of communication, conversation. Another difficult thing about Geminis and their humor and when you date them is, uh, your humor and their humor will become one. So it's already probably quite similar because that makes you compatible. But you know, you will share so many inside jokes. You will share so many funny stories. You will say the same little things. You'll get the same little quirks. And if you aren't with that person, it can cause a lot of pain wanting to share a joke with them, wanting to share an inside an inside joke with somebody and not being able to or you know using a phrase that you guys might have used together it can actually be kind of painful they will definitely leave an impression on you in several ways number three just when you think things have settled down you're easing into a, a little kind of routine with them they will shake it up in some way so if you are somebody who needs uh, consistency when it comes to daily routine and you want to go to the same restaurant every Friday night and you want to go to the same vacation spot every year be prepared for a roller coaster ride Gemini thrives on variety they love change they love spontaneity that is one of my favorite things about them is that they they are spontaneous and unafraid to try almost anything. And especially if someone's like, oh, I don't know, or I don't think we should try that, it makes them want to try even more. It's like curiosity is just their thing. So yeah, if you have been single for a while and you're into a routine and you want someone who can puzzle piece fit into that routine, but you've fallen for a Gemini, get ready. They are going to destroy your daily schedule. They are gonna be calling you at one o'clock in the morning, telling you they love you. They are gonna be sending you memes in the middle of the day when you're trying to focus and work. They're gonna be sending you hot pictures when you're trying to focus on your Zoom meeting. Uh, they are going to whisk you away to an Airbnb somewhere in the mountains or by the beach or somewhere, uh, some kind of spontaneous trip when maybe you had plans and they're just like, no, 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 come on, come on, come on, let's go, this is gonna be fun. They are going to get you trying things that you were terrified to try. They are going to push you out of your comfort zone. It's kind of like a baby bird in the nest. They're like, let's go, fly away, but it's all done with love. But that is what keeps the flame alive in the relationship. Obviously, you wanna be with someone who respects your boundaries. You can say, can you not call me at one o'clock in the morning? But you gotta allow some room for that spontaneity and that roller coaster energy because again that's what's going to keep the flame alive at least with them so you might be getting less sleep you might be traveling more oh what a bummer you might pick up an expensive new hobby i don't know they're really going to shake up the way that you live your life and in that way gemini's i believe they really shake up your idea of your identity i think they open up your view of what you can be, who you can be. They break down barriers that you might have had where you say, oh, I'm not someone who does that. Or, well, my family, we never did that stuff, so I, I'm, not, I'm never gonna try that. You might have a little bit of an identity crisis dating a Gemini, so get ready. So another way dating a Gemini will ruin your life is that they are going to get you so used to having someone around who is just ridiculously good with their hands. Uh, so, some of the body parts that Gemini rules are, are the lungs, but also the shoulders, the arms, the fingers, the hands. So m most often we refer to, we say Gemini rules the hands, okay? They're, they're hands on people. So, because they're also busy bodies. I think, I think the reason why they enjoy doing projects with their hands is because they're so cerebral. There's so much going on up here that it calms that energy. I've, I finally kind of got it because uh, during during this lockdown, I was very, very anxious. I was kind of obsessing over uh, hearing from certain people or, or feeling very lonely. And I started redoing my bathroom. And those days when I was painting and redoing my bathroom, I wasn't worried about who was hitting me up. I, my hands were busy. So there is much 
to be said for keeping your hands busy. So Gemini, you're onto something. But the Gemini that I dated was a handyman type, okay? This person knew how to fix and do anything and everything. This person was incredibly skilled also at uh, decoration, like home decor, crazy skilled, making things. Um, uh, other Geminis I know are amazing at cooking. In, like it's like they have a gift, not only with cooking but with the presentation because it, it all goes into it. It's almost like acts of service. I feel Gemini, one of their main love languages is usually acts of service because with your hands you do things. So that also might be gift giving, but really gift giving I think can also be an act of service. You know, I repaired this piece of furniture for you and made it look a little better, here you go. Or I, you know, I cooked this for you and I'm gonna leave it with you so that you have something to eat this week. Not all people love that way at all. And you will eventually realize, you know, the longer you date this person, you're gonna have everything fixed in your house. You might be eating delicious meals. They might be cleaning your house as something that they do for you to be kind. And what's hard about that is, not only do you learn to depend on them for those things, but also uh, within your own space, you will look around and see things that remind you of them. So you run a risk if you don't end up with this person that their little marks are in your home or around you. Artwork they've made you. The Gemini that I dated made me a desk. Literally I mentioned that I wanted a desk and they found a desk, redid it. It was in the mid-century style that I wanted and that was a present was they made me a desk. They might have like given you a little tattoo or helped you dye your hair or cut your hair. These little physical things as human beings are actually, they can be quite painful, even more than thoughts. Little things that are left over from people, I'm sure you know this if you've dated someone and you've had to get over a breakup. So when it comes to being spoiled by their skills and their generosity and the things that they'll do for you, you also run the risk of that being so much a part of your life and your space that it's a reminder that maybe you no longer have them. Here's a funny one, but it's true. You will constantly be exposed and involved in gossip, even if you don't want to be. It doesn't mean that the, this uh, Gemini, I almost said Libra because Libras are different with gossip, but it doesn't mean that the Gemini is the center of gossip. They're not always the ones at the center of drama, but they are up to date on all of the tea and they've i mean if you're their best friend and their partner they've got to spill it to you so you are probably going to have to sit through a lot of conversations about what's going on in the office the drama what's going on with the family drama what's going on in the friend circle did you hear this did you hear this and some people just aren't into gossip at all and some people just don't care and don't like it but a gemini kind of thrives on gossip and that is not everybody's cup of tea Hot tea is not everybody's cup of tea. So just be careful, just be careful. Make sure there is a level of trust between you guys that, that gossip is not gonna get out uh, from between you two. And yeah, if anything, if you trust this person, just keep it between you. So as I mentioned before, Geminis are known for communication. And so if you are someone who enjoys your uh, privacy more than talking about your feelings or talking about things and you're someone who walks away uh, if you're kind of an avoidant type uh, and you don't really like confrontation or again talking about things you'd rather sweep things under the rug or just kind of feel out the energy uh, you're gonna have trouble dating a Gemini because Gemini's they have to talk things out if they don't it, they become either very resentful or just they don't know what's going on inside of them. I don't find them to be like terribly resentful, grudgy people. It's more just like I don't know what's happening and I have known Geminis with Earth in their chart especially to, to take a lot on. They start bearing a lot but because they're not expressing and all of this is closed, they are like, uh, I'm losing my mind and I don't know what to do. And they might pour themselves into activities with their hands, they might get really into their work or something like that, um, or they might turn to some self-destructive uh, habits to sort of feel better, but in the end, it's so simple. All they need to do is clear that pipe, you know, let it out. And so if you're in a relationship with a Gemini, you are going to have to either 
continue healthy communication with them or learn how to communicate. And for many people, it's 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 a new language. It really is because if if you've been taught to kind of suppress emotions, it's something that's very common. You'll run into issues trying to maintain a, a relationship with a healthy Gemini. If you try to ignore them or give them the cold shoulder, or if you're being passive aggressive, they'll call you out. They will call you out. They're not going to live in a home where you guys are not talking for days or where you are acting like things are fine and they know better. They're not thought to be super emotional and, and like psychic, but they really are incredibly intuitive because as the communicators, they pick up on little things in your face, your body language. They're, they're almost like, it reminds me of like a bird-like energy or like deer, you know, in the forest where they pick up on everything or like motion sensor cameras or something. They are like hyper aware of, of your reaction, especially if they care about you. It might be something tough. I know it really can be difficult for a lot of people to learn how to communicate uh, with words and sitting down with people and fighting it out or arguing it out, you know, and, and some people's some people's instinct is to retreat. It kind of reminds me on The Office where Jim and Pam were going through a hard time. And Jim is like, I'm gonna go to Philly tonight because I just feel like we're gonna fight. So I'm just gonna go tonight and stay the night. And she's like, no, I think you should stay here tonight and I think we should fight it out. And he's like, okay, I think that's a Gemini thing. It's like, no, we're not, I'm not doing this. I'm not living a life where we've got walls. A, a Gemini can have their own ways of putting up walls, but with their partner, the way that they're happiest is with that open, free-flowing, almost water-like or air-like communication. So if you really want to make it work with the Gemini, uh, you are going to have to learn how to do that. And the reason why I included about ruining your life is it's, it's another way of, of reinventing yourself, reinventing your life. It's going to ruin your life as you know it if you haven't lived like that, because guess what? You're not gonna be able to hold your tongue when that family member says something unacceptable. You're not going to be able to uh, tolerate abuse and unkindness from your coworkers. You're not going to ever uh, accept being in a relationship or a friendship with someone who ignores you or give, gives you the cold shoulder or is passive aggressive. Learning healthy communication though is the most valuable thing you can do when it comes to being a human being who lives a life filled with relationships. Get ready, because you will be called out. You will be forced to sit through some uncomfortable conversations. You will be forced to be completely honest. Uh, not forced by the person, but you know, the way to communicate, that's what you've got to do. You know, if you make mistakes, you're going to have to give every detail. In order to make them feel better, if you've made an error, you are going to have to give every detail and go through how it happened because that open communication and that honesty is how they trust and that's how you're going to get the best out of them. And we are at my last point, which is uh, the multifaceted nature of a Gemini. People say they're two-faced and then other people make the joke that no, it's more than two-faced. They've got a million personalities. and. I don't know, sometimes as someone who does astrology on the internet and stuff, I, I like, I don't really know who's making these jokes. I'm like, how many, I don't know, I mean, all humans are multifaceted. But I will say with a Gemini, they have so many interests, so many skills that we've talked about, so much depth to their personality, they have so much they can talk about, they can, they're like little experts on so many different topics. They are just endless sources of of joy and entertainment and humor. Geminis, they can often be perceived as shallow or spacey, but it's rarely the case. They've got layers and layers and layers and layers, and like I said, they do build walls with certain people, so it really just depends on if they're going to show you that side or not. But when it comes down to really knowing a Gemini, you will understand the true complexity of other human beings. You know, we know ourselves to be complex because we know all of our thoughts and all of our traumas and all of our experiences and all of our maybe various masks that we wear, but it's very hard to perceive someone else that way, to perceive someone else and think that they could be half as complex as we are. Well, because we're not living in their bodies, but many people, most people are, but Geminis especially. Now, although human emotion and all humans are complex, I will say not everyone is deep. Not everyone is really that deep. You know, there's that quote, people can only meet you as deep as they've met themselves. So sometimes I've met people and I'm like, why am I not clicking with you? 
why can I not get any deeper than these three topics and these three activities and I don't feel like we're, we're just running in a hamster wheel because it's just there's not you're running in a hamster wheel because if you if you're on a road the road would stop it's a dead end there's not much more there at least with this person and you they're not giving you anymore with a Gemini it's it's endless so you are going to have this expectation that people can meet you deeply that everybody can offer you that spontaneous beautiful multifaceted energy and it's not always the case and so if you move on from a relationship with a Gemini you will surely if you date around find yourself disappointed by the lack of depth and the lack of engaging conversation that you you might not find with other people but I think the most wonderful thing about that is that you realize and you learn firsthand that not everyone is what meets the eye that you truly cannot judge a book by its cover and you can bring that into every relationship in your life i think that's a beautiful thing being cognizant of the fact that others have depth too and there's more than than maybe the first or second judgment you have about them and treating them as such treating them as complex human beings that make mistakes and have different personalities and, and might surprise you at any moment People feel that and appreciate that and I think it makes your world much more colorful and exciting to live in as well. So if you are about to date a Gemini, you're dating a Gemini, you're thinking about dating one, uh, you're thinking about whether or not to date one, I hope this video helped. I always say I would never ever ever let astrology get in the way of love. The heart knows better, you know? If your heart feels like there might be something there, go for it. Life is short. Life is so short. So buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I will talk to you in my next one. Love you very much. Mwah!